Hey Wheaton North, Ms. Euler here. This video is going to get into acids and bases and neutralization reactions, and we're going to make the connection to net ionic equations as well. So let's get started. The first way of understanding an acid and a base, of defining an acid and a base, is referred to as the Arrhenius definition. Uh, this goes back to late 1800s, where it was kind of established by this guy with the last name of Arrhenius that acids donate hydrogen ions. They, they give off H's uh, in solution. And so HCl is a common acid. It, it dissociates into H plus and Cl minus, and because it's producing an H plus in solution, it's therefore an acid. Uh, other examples are uh, HNO3, common example, nitric acid, and acetic acid is, is this other one here. C2H3O2 minus is the acetate ion. That's actually the acid that's in vinegar, so we see that a lot too. Bases, according to Arrhenius, uh, donate hydroxide ions, and so Anything that has a hydroxide is going to be a, an Arrhenius base. So sodium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, etc. Um, this makes it so there's only one type of base. You can only have hydroxides as bases. We later kind of realized that, that it probably should be more broad than that. There's other, um, there's other substances that act as bases. Ammonia is probably the most common one that acts like a base, but it's not a base according to Arrhenius because there's no OH produced. Uh, there's, no, there's no OH in the formula. And here's, uh, here's Arrhenius, in case you want to look at him for a little bit. Another definition that came a little bit later was Bronsted-Lowry, and this is two guys that kind of came up with it simultaneously, is my understanding. Um, it's a little bit broader than, than Arrhenius, and it, it, but it, it's simil very similar but slightly different, and that makes it uh, broader. So in terms of acids, it's largely the same. Acids donate protons. And here we're going to use the word proton to refer to an H-plus ion. If you think about what an H plus ion is, it's an hydrogen, um, an hydro a hydrogen atom that has lost its electron, which means it's really just a proton. That's all there is to it. Bronsted-Lowry said that bases will accept protons. So it, rather than saying that a base produces an OH, we're saying now that bases uh, accept or receive a proton. So these always have to come in pairs because an acid is always giving up a, a proton. Bases are always taking it. And so if you look at, it, at an example of HCl in water, you have to include the water to, in order to show what's kind of absorbing that proton. So HCl is giving up uh, an H. If you look at, kind of track the H here, we're going from HCl to just Cl. And where's that H going? It's going onto the water. We're going from H2O to H3O, and then it's positive now because it has that ion. Um, and so water here is actually the base because it's received the proton. And HCl is still the acid, so it's consistent with the other definition. HCl is the acid because it's given up the proton. This H3O plus is referred to as the, the hydronium ion, and it's often used interchangeably with the H plus. So, so there's, all these things are equivalent. Maybe make a note to yourself in your notes. Proton, H plus, H3O plus, these are all really the same thing, kind of different ways of representing the same thing. When acids and bases react with each other, they're always going to form a salt and, and water. And here where I'm talking about something that's kind of a true acid and true base, something that always is an acid and always is a base. I, I said a second ago that water was acting like a base because it was with an acid, it was receiving a proton. Water is a little bit unique in that way. It can, it can kind of act as an acid or a base depending on what you put it with. Uh, but a lot of things will, will always behave like an acid. Nitric acid is one of them. And, and a lot of things will always... Uh, act as a base, lithium hydroxide. Going back to those those first definitions we had at the beginning of the, of the video here. So nitric acid, HNO3, and lithium hydroxide, you put these two together and it's a, it's a standard double replacement reaction. You're going to produce a salt of some kind and water. And this is true of all acid-base reactions because acid-base reactions are always with something that produces an H and with something that produces an OH and you put those together you get HOH which is water, right? H2O. What's left is the salt ions. Uh, in this case, it's li lithium nitrate, but it could be all kinds of different. You could have all kinds of different salts, depending on what your, uh, what your metal is on your hydroxide and your anion is on your acid. So let's look at another example real quick. If you look at sulfuric acid with potassium hydroxide, um, this one's a little bit unique because the sulfuric acid is what we call diprotic. There's two protons on it. There's two H's, right? And so there's a mole ratio that's not exactly one-to-one -one here, and you have to pay attention to that and kind of be careful of it. Uh, you're still going to produce salt and water. So the salt in this case is going to be potassium sulfate and, and then your water molecule. 
Uh, and to have the potassium sulfate written correctly, you have to have that two on the potassium, right? So your charge is balanced. Let's break this up into ions. Um, first, we have to balance it. So make sure you have the same number of everything on both sides. A couple of twos takes care of that. Here's the ions. So H, H, H2SO4 would split up into its ions. So you have H plus and you have SO4 minus. K plus and, and OH minus. And then same thing on the, on the product side. Except now water molecules are not going to split up into ions, right? W water is a, is, a, is a molecule that stays together. Um, it does dissociate to some degree, but in general, we think of it as, as staying as H2O. Now, carry down these, these uh, coefficients of two to make sure you have this, the right number of everything on both sides, right? This is your complete ionic equation, everything that's in solution, right? Now, what's truly going on is just the formation of the water, right? Notice that potassium is floating around after the reaction. It, it was floating around before the reaction. Uh, sulfate is floating around before the reaction and after the reaction. These are the spectator ions. You would cross them out and, and get down to your uh, net ionic equation. And so in, a, in an acid-base reaction, because we're forming water molecules from the H and the OH, your net ionic equation for pretty much all acid-base reactions is going to involve just hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions forming water. There are some exceptions to that. There are some situations where we might form um, a, a, a gas, like a carbon dioxide gas is common when you have a carbonate. And there's a few other examples that you could you could point to where it doesn't follow this pattern exactly. But a lot of standard acid-base reactions involve just the formation of water molecules when it comes down to the net ionic equation. So that's acid-base reactions and neutralization. If you have any questions, then, of course, bring them up in class. Ms. Yerler, signing out.